Peace, my name is Dynas. D Y N A S, Dynas. Spell it right, get it right. Uh, I started putting out records in uh, like 2000. My first record came out with DJ Spinner. Um, that was uh, Stick Move, Strike Back. After that, you know, I started putting out some 12 inches. I was part of the Raucous 50. That was a few years back. Through Walk Raucous, my first album came out. I can't even remember the year right now, but um, maybe 2007 or something like that. It was called Me, Myself, and Rhymes. After the Me, Myself, and Rhymes, um, you know, I then started putting out some more singles after that. My next album came out through BBE Records. It was called The Apartment. That was in 2009. Um, you know, and it, it was, it did well. Um, so, you know, I worked on a lot of, I worked with a lot of different producers on that particular joint. I had um, Jay Dilla. Uh, the Apartment was produced by him. But every time she walks away, I get nervous, my stomach's turning, I keep on begging her to stay, come on back to the apartment. So um, I had S1, Symbolic One, Ill Mind, Tony Galvin, uh, Illustrate, uh, Man Crisis, uh, Ninth Wonder was on the Japanese version. Lick Rick was my biggest feature on there. Jazzy Jeff was on the album. I almost forgot Jazzy Jeff. But Jazzy Jeff was on the album, you know what I'm saying? And um, we just made we made a nice little album that did well independently. But it, you know, I needed more of a push. After I did that, I wanted to like go to the next level, son. So it's funny, like the way me and Tony got together, I'm gonna tell you how we how we hooked up, but it was like, yo, you know, a lot of people was trying to keep us from, from working on some shit. So there's a lot of people in Miami that didn't want me and Tony Gavin to hook up for some reason. You know what I mean? Like, they was just blocking it. They was trying their hardest. Uh, my name's Tony Galvin. Not really great at interviews, but I'm going to give y'all this one today. I've done some things you may have heard of, some people you may have heard of. Um, I worked with uh, Trick Daddy, one of my biggest projects. Um, Trina, um, Public Enemy. Um, let's see, Shy, R&B group, Karen White, uh, Elder Barge, Babyface, T.I., Jeezy. Then we've also uh, had the opportunity to work on a lot of movie stuff, Any Given Sunday, uh, Crank, Harold and Kumar go to White Castle is one of my favorite, South Park, the A-Team, I think, I, I don't know if I mentioned the A-Team. So yeah, you know, it's been a busy, busy life being a producer. Talk a little bit about the album, like uh, when did it start, when did you start working on it? Uh, <laughs> how long did it take to complete? Yo, should I tell them the truth? <laughs> Yo, this shit started like eight years ago, seven years ago, some crazy shit. Like before the apartment, before I was doing any, any of any of those records I was doing, like around the time I was working, maybe with the Rockets shit, we started it. Yeah. I wasn't planning on really working on no music at this time, being honest, you know what I mean? Like Vinny, my lawyer, executive producer, Tony, my producer, executive producer. Um, you know we. They called me, wanted to partner up and, you know, get Donetsk out there doing his thing again, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, took a little convincing, but I, I'm here. <laughs> um, it's what we always wanted to do. It's been a while making this project. You know, I stayed away from the music for a minute. I really wasn't in it swimming. I would still do features, but I really wasn't, like, putting out anything myself, you know? I had two sons, one in 09 and one in 14. So keeping it all the way 100, like if, if it really wasn't for Tony, 
I wouldn't, I'd be with my kids right now cooking them porridge, you know what I'm saying? Or I would be with my, my wife right now. I wouldn't really like be jumped into this. I ain't even gonna play like I'm, yeah, I'm in the studio every day, dog. I mean, I still do features. I do a lot of features, you know, so I go to the studio and knock down verses for people. And, you know, I still work with a lot of producers. They send me music and stuff, and it keeps me inspired. So I never stepped that far away from it where I wasn't, still had some inspiration around. But in terms of like coming out and like saying, you know, let's just step into the game and do what we do and make it a viable option for us to eat off of, hell yeah. That was Tony and Vinny for sure, like it wasn't me. So I appreciate them for that. We uh, both have lives, we have responsibilities, things we had to take care of, but we always kept that relationship open where, you know, if he needed me, he could reach out to me if I needed him. And we just happened to say, you know what? Let's go ahead and do this and see what happens. And big and tall LP. So. We, we picked it back up and um, after talking to them and um, we came to some agreements on how it should go. Tony's beats are undeniable. They, they straight fire, you know, and we always had a good chemistry working. So we decided to do the record. It was originally called something else and then it morphed into the Big and Tall LP. Just cause you know, we big, we big brothers, <laughs> you know, and our egos are tall as fuck. <laughs> you know, so because of who we are and the way we get down and how we've been with each other in terms of like our work ethic and the passion for the music and the insight that we both have, we said, all right, we'll do it. You know what I'm saying? And we put it out through AVX, distributed through Empire. And you know, we'll see where it goes. We're just gonna be putting out music basically. Like the thing about it is there's a lot of there's a lot of good music that you have to dig for, but you know, basically there's nothing really speaking to us that really fits what we we feel the music should sound like. You know what I mean? Like there's nobody doing it like the way that we're doing it. Uh, the big and tall LP, um, I think it's just a great project. Uh, it came together organically. That's the good thing about this record is that <clears throat> it wasn't like, okay, you got eight, eight days to do, you know, 20 tracks or, you, you know, a certain, a certain amount of time. We, we just worked on it freely. That's the pre pleasure of being on an independent. There ain't no, there ain't no motherfucking release day. <laughs> you know what I mean? We the release day. We, when we release it, that's the day. Um, we really, we really didn't uh, set out to try and make a masterpiece and I may be a little forward in calling it that but if the color is blue and it's a pretty blue I'm gonna say it's a pretty blue and this is a pretty blue the beats are dope the lyrics are dope the message is there and it's honest doesn't get any better than that we had like 14 joints um, Tony only wanted to do two or three I'm gonna tell all his secrets Tony only wanted to do two or three new records I had to nudge him Tony only wanted to do four or five new records. I had to nudge it and push it and, you know, like, come on, like, get his brain in the lock. Even though that'd be hard, they got a big head. But on the real though, like, you know, it, it ended up being, we did like, what, 10 new records and we used nine of them. And we used nine and we took some of the old joints off and we put it together and you have the Big and Tall LP. Listening to D on this project, first as a friend, I'm super proud of him. You know what I'm saying? Uh, the hooks, the concepts are all gelled tight, you know? I'm very impressed with that. Like, I really was able to sit, step away and kind of look in at what he was doing to my beats. And that was like super impressive, you know? We talk about hoes. We talk about, nah, I'm just joking. <laughs> now nah, we. <laughs> We talk about, um, I mean, you know, basically it's what we live in, grown man business, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, it's about um, life, you know, the trivials, situations that we sometimes place ourselves in, you know what I mean? Basically, talking about myself a little bit on there, you know? And um, honestly, you know, kind of like how our lifestyle is, you know what I'm saying? Like, we do party. We hang out, we get, we get, you know, a little crazy, but we also take care of our business at the same time. So it's some grown man situations on that album. You know what I mean? All 
as friendship, as far as going through the process, he definitely uh, let me know that if whatever I need, he would be there. You know what I'm saying? Him and his family, you know, hi Rodney. Um, you know, I mean, just really great people, real solid, solid to the core people. You know, the kind of person that if you're broke down 20 miles away, they're coming to get you. That, that kind of solid. And uh, all around, man, it's just like one of my best friends. I really, really, truly enjoy working with him on this project. Yeah, it took years and it takes years to build that kind of relationship with somebody, to be able to be that honest and nobody take it to heart. We just, okay, maybe let's go try that. And that's what we do and that's what we did. It's really a pleasure to work with your homies, you know what I'm saying? Like, when we go to our nine to five, the guy next to us, we don't know him, you know what I'm saying? But when you when you in the environment of work, the music, and you know what I'm saying, you have talented people around you, it makes it such a, it makes it like, you know, like everything that you've ever wanted in life, you know what I mean? More so than, like being on stage and rocking stage is, is, is dope. But when you in the studio, when I'm in the studio with him, and I hear that shit drop, there's nothing like it, you know what I mean? So that's what we trying to like, that vibe and that adulation, we trying to bring it to the people, you know what I mean? The industry needs as much good hip hop as it can get from everywhere, not just Dynast. And if anybody's watching this, take heed. If you have some tight shit, put it out. We need to saturate with hip hop. That's where it all came from and people are forgetting it. It's beauty, it's, it's life. It's a way for us to communicate what, what happens, what's going on. Don't forget where we come from. Do not forget it. That's all I have to say to y'all. Love and peace. Tone God. The basis of who I am is in my music. You know, every go round. Not every song is the same, but you know what I'm saying? I, I mean, I'm Caribbean. I'm from New York. But I really became a man in Miami. You know what I'm saying? So I was raised in so many different environments that I have so much dexterity as to where I can go with my subject matter, you know what I'm saying, college educated, uh, did dirt, you know what I'm saying, been high, been low, you know, have money, been broke, you know what I mean, so I've been everywhere, man, you know what I'm saying, I've traveled the world too, I've toured, you know what I'm saying, so I have a perspective that Whatever the beat says to me, I can put something on that shit that'll make it interesting enough for you want to hear it again and again. Or hear, you know, hear the next set of records that I got. My joints ain't heard enough yet, but they about to. That's why we doing this record, you know what I mean? Like, I'm respected and I, re I appreciate everybody that's giving me love, you know what I mean? But we evolve and we grow, so the music is just refreshing right now. It's, it's, that's, if I could use an adjective, it's very refreshing. That's what we doing. Dinesse. Peace.